Welcome to the new version of Pictavo. We're excited to show you how Pictavo helps you take advantage of the latest technology, including tablets, and can help you create and sell your yearbook even easier than before. That's right, the new version of Pictavo, available for the 2017-18 school year starting August 1st, will enable you to use your tablet for all the same functions that were previously only available on a desktop or laptop computer. Today, we will show you Pictavo's new dashboard and organizational tools and new design features. Let's get started. Once signed in, you'll be taken directly to our new and improved dashboard. The first thing you'll notice is an updated interface that's more modern and designed to get out of your way. Because the entire system is responsive, the interface resizes to maximize your workspace regardless of if it's a traditional desktop computer with a large screen monitor or a touchscreen tablet in the palm of your hands. Notice some of the items on the dashboard are familiar, like the project status thermometers and the countdown timer. Other dashboard features, like the coverage and yearbook sales areas, have been added based on customer requests to see this information with ease every time they log in. The biggest improvement to Pictavo that you can use to help cover more students and sell more yearbooks is the ability to upload your student roster to track both coverage and online sales through Pictavo Community. The student roster also helps you auto tag students to ensure name consistency and target those students who have not yet purchased a yearbook. As in the past, you can also manually enter sales information for anyone that doesn't order online or is not in the student roster. Also included in the dashboard is a calendar that shows user-created events and an inspiration gallery that leads to Pinterest boards consisting of the latest design techniques and yearbook tips. We've made our new dashboard customizable too, so if certain areas are more important to you than others, you can keep them front and center. Let's see how the calendar works now. A project admin can create and assign events that show up here and on the dashboard so those important moments throughout the school year aren't lost or forgotten. You'll see several events that have already been added. I can click or tap on an event to edit or change it, and creating a new event is no sweat. Pictavo's calendar also includes a dedicated tasks list. Here project admins can create and assign tasks to their users, and those users can see assigned tasks and generate their own. In this view, we can see all of our tasks those that are coming up, or just focus on today. We can also look at the tasks that we've created and assigned to other users. Creating a task is also very easy. You simply click on New Task, assign the date and or person, and it'll show as a task for that person when they log in. Let's move now from Pictavo's organizational tools to the design portion of Pictavo, where you can take advantage of many new features you're sure to love. Here we are in the Pictavo design area. As you can see, it also has a simplified design to give you the most workspace. So this is a finished layout. Something like this is where most users want to end up. Opening a page, a blank canvas, can be a little intimidating. Sometimes it's difficult to even get started if you aren't exactly sure what look you're going for or how to get there. That's exactly why we've implemented practice pages a place to practice, to learn tools, to mess around with things, and not actually have to commit your practice to an actual page of your book. Let's take a look at the practice page area. To get to practice pages, we'll go through the ladder. As you can see, the ladder looks a little different. We've merged pages and the ladder view from the current version of Pictavo to create a ladder with two different views that we can toggle between. Over here in the left column, you can see sections. This is an easy way to organize and assign content to the pages of your book. Let's say I know I want pages four and five to contain first grade classes. And I want someone named Renee to work on them. Renee's pages are purple, so she'll know when she looks at the ladder 
that this section is now assigned to her. Now let's head up to practice pages. As you can see, we have a few set up already. If we wanted to add more, we can, as many as we want. However many your team needs to flex their creative muscles while they learn the program or experiment with design ideas. If you look above practice pages, there are also practice covers. Same idea, try things out, compare ideas, all without having to commit to your actual cover. So we're going to open a practice page that already has some elements on it. You'll notice that this page has a grid system already in place. This is a new feature. Our design team has found that using a grid helps with design continuity and consistency as we create art and templates for our customers to use. Speaking of which, notice that the elements already on this page follow the grid system. These are examples of what you might find in the template and snippet libraries. Our design system was created with the idea of easy customization in mind. Let's say you're using a template but realize you need room for more candid images. We've designed using this grid so you can pluck out an area of your template and find a snippet that fits this area of your page with room for more candidates, depending on your needs. And we aren't talking about a couple of generic snippets. Each and every art collection included in this version of Pictavo will have its very own set of full page templates and snippets already designed with the fonts, the accents, and the general style that matches with the collection you've already started designing in. So maybe you don't like this specific grid size. No problem, head to settings, and you can adjust the size of the grid that you might prefer to design on. Not sure if you've made the right decision, you can always go back to the default. So maybe designing on a grid isn't for you at all, you can turn it off. There are a few other little helpers over here in the settings area. You can turn on rulers, smart guides, snap to guides, etc. So let's get back to practicing. Let's select this dominant image here and just for kicks, we're going to move him real close to the edge. You'll see we don't have a pop-up up here to tell you when you're too close to the trim edge. Instead, the frame turns color to alert you to the fact that you have a warning. You want to know what the warning is? Go to the info icon and your warning appears across the top of your page. Once you've got it, close it and move on. You've probably also noticed that when I select an element on my page, a contextual menu appears. These menus are smart. The only tools that show are tools that apply to the element that you've chosen. When I choose an image, only image specific functions show up. I can add an effect, a border, you name it. If you're not sure if you're a fan of a menu appearing here and there on your page while you design, you can dock it and it will stay over here until you undock it. Um, let's add a headline to our page. You'll see over here in your text palette that we've created a default header, subheader, body, and caption style. You'll have the ability to assign your own styles to these, again, to make your book's design consistent and fluid from one page to the next. No more flipping back and forth trying to figure out what another designer used on another layout. They'll all be right here for you, for your entire team to use. So let's select header. It'll appear on your page. Double click to edit. Oops. Looks like spell check's working. So now I'd like to place an image on my page. We have a circular photo box already on the page. We'll head out to Candids. And notice now we can create folders inside of folders. This is great for organizing images coming from different classrooms, different events, different parents. Using the crop tool, I can zoom in just a little and reposition the image right in my photo box. Now let's say I know I have an image out on my desktop that I also want to get on this layout. Another new feature is the ability to just drag and drop. 
Now, let's just say we really like how this layout looks and we want to save it as a template. Give it a unique name. And once it's saved as a template, we can use it over and over throughout our book. So let's head to a real page in our actual book. It looks like it's just waiting for a portrait flow. Now we can actually create a portrait grid without having a portrait database loaded into our book. We're going to go visit the portrait icon over here and a default grid will appear. Once again, our menu only shows us tools that are relevant in customizing our portrait grid. We can adjust rows, columns, even the spacing between. We can change where names are placed and we can even change the font. I can then save my settings for future portrait grids. And when I place one on the next page, I already have my settings from the last one. Now if we want to add an accent to the page, we can just select a piece from the library We'll use a colorable piece. Notice the color menu is different. There are five times more colors to choose from now. It sounds like a lot, right? Well, we've also implemented a feature that will allow you to save a color so that when you add another piece of art and you'd like to use the exact same color, it's right down here waiting for you. This version of Pictavo is always auto-saving in the background. If you think you might be at a good design point and you know you may need to come back to this point later, you can actually save a version. You can pick a unique name and save knowing you can always come back to this point in the future. So as you've seen, the new version of Pictavo is loaded with powerful tools to help you stay organized and create a beautiful yearbook. Pictavo, designed for the way you work.